If you've ever wanted to find new and exciting ways to make yourself crazy when making a model, adding hydraulic lines is probably one of the best ways to do it. I'm Robbie the Model Guy and in this episode we're going to add a few more details to the Tamiya Corsair before moving into base painting. So sit back and enjoy the ride. To me, it does give you a nice hydraulic setup in the wheelbase, but unfortunately it's missing anything resembling hydraulic lines, and that's no fault of theirs. I can imagine that slide molding anything like that would be a challenge, but by just using some lead wire and super glue and taking your time with a few decent reference photos, you can really take your model to another level. If you're nervous about painting details that small, a nice cheat that I use is lacquer paint for the base and then acrylics for the details, because then if you make any mistakes, you can simply come in with some acrylic thinner and wipe them away. To make things pop a little bit more, I'm using Ammo's new panel line washes, and instead of using a harsh black that would make this a very stark contrast and looking sort of fake, I'm using their light grey for the white. To get rid of the seam in front of the windshield, and the only cleanup this kit needed, I'd simply use some sprue goo, which is nice because it actually melts the plastic a bit and bonds, so when you come in to sand it, there's less chance of a ghost seam. To try to keep the plastic on the windscreen and canopy from looking like it's just simply painted clear styrene, I actually mask the insides using the templates left over from the outside masks, if that makes sense. That way you can have a nice flat interior and it makes the window look like it's three separate parts. You can build this Corsair right out of the box and have yourself a very nice looking model. But I like to push things a little bit so using the Anycubic 3D printer, and some Fusion 360 time, I designed some simple spark plugs to go into the front of the cylinders. And it took a few attempts to get these to print properly, but once they did, it was simply a matter of drilling the hole and gluing them in place. If you're looking for something like this you can buy out of the box, check out NEZ. He's got these all ready to go and they look fantastic. Lead wire is used again for the ignition coils on the engine, and then excess super glue is cleaned away with some debonder. The nice thing about the black AK super glue is it's easier to see while you're cleaning it. The only downfall of Tamiya's kit, which isn't really any fault of theirs, is that the tolerances are so tight that if you do any scratch building, it's going to require a lot of test fitting. With this engine, I thought I was going to be a superstar and put some ignition wires for the cylinders behind as well, but then when I went to put the cowling covers on, there was a bit of an issue of them not fitting properly and those wires had to be removed. That meant that this bird was going to have a closed cowling. And that wasn't such a bad thing because it keeps the lines from the Corsair from being disturbed. And really when you have the cowlings off, the only thing you can see is the top of the cylinder heads. And there's really not too much going on there, so I didn't think it was that big of a loss. If you're about to leave an angry comment in the comment section below saying, Robbie, you should have just shown the whole engine, all the wiring, all the good stuff. Don't worry. I also have Tamiya's 132.0 in the stash, and the way that's been designed is you can show off the entire engine and all the jewelry that you want to put into it. So we'll probably see that on the channel early next year. For the chipping you just witnessed, all that is is an acrylic paint on top of a lacquer with no chipping fluid. Because that lacquer is such a hard, durable paint, you can really beat that up without damaging it, which makes it perfect for chipping off acrylic paint on top. To get different types of chipping, I use things like toothpick, sewing needles, or even sandpaper depending on the effect I'm looking for. The nice thing about using acrylic paints on top of lacquers in these tight, tight areas is that if you touch the wrong part, you can just come in with the thinners and wipe it away. Speaking of radial engines, if you're also a fan of the sound of round, you can get t-shirts from my web store which feature the Pratt & Whitney 2800. If you're someone who really likes to stir it up, I also have a rivet counter shirt available as well and the not-so-tame Keep Calm Sniff Glue shirt, all designed by my wife. You'll definitely stand out at your next club meeting or show. To make that radial engine pop just a little bit more, I brought out all the details using the wash made with Abtalung oils and thinner. I know that there are aftermarket options for this engine, but to me it's done a really good job and with just using some lead wire, it's not something you really need to replace. I also don't think there's too many things more satisfying in modeling than watching a pin wash flow into all those details. To make the exhaust pipe stand out and to stay away from the usual rusty approach some people take, I used some sky grey paint and polished it out with some steel pigments just to have them shine a little bit and look more like metal. 
One thing I wasn't a fan of with the Tamiya kit is the simple cowl flaps, so I designed some actuators using my 3D printer and Fusion again, and then using some Easy Line made it look like it was an actual mechanical item, rather just simple plastic. They may not be 100% accurate, but they do give you the impression that something is there. Or if you want, you can spend a few days trying to track down one of the few vector resin replacements available. Researching colors for the Corsair can definitely be a challenge because there's a lot of gray areas where things overlap with what may have been happening coming from the factory. I thought that zinc chromate yellow would be the color for the cow flaps, but quite a few sources said that a neutral gray was what you would see inside the cow flaps and inside the front of the engine cover. Remember all those fancy wires going to the rear bank of cylinders? They're gone. If only somebody else was producing a kit, maybe in a larger scale that had a 2800 radial engine in it. Hmm. Let's move back into paint. One of my favorite primers to use is Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. And one cheat you can do with this primer is once you've laid it down, you can actually cover it with a wet coat of Mr. Leveling Thinner that really helps it bake down and flatten out and not get rid of any details. It's a wet coat, not a soaking coat though. Now for the first time since my Zero last year, I was going to attempt some multi-layer chipping. And to do this, I was going to start with some Mr. Metal Color Aluminum, because once again, this is a very lustrous and very durable paint. And once I was happy with the coverage of the aluminum, I then covered the areas I wanted to chip with two thin layers of the AK chipping fluid. While that was drying, I moved on to the insignias on the outside of the wings and the fuselage where there wouldn't be any chipping. Because one thing I've learned is that if you try to mask on top of chipping fluid, you're going to have a bad time. The Corsair is my favorite aircraft to come out of World War II, and I wanted to do this justice. I didn't want a nice clean museum paint or something that was mildly weathered. For the first time with an aircraft model, I wanted to dial this up to 11 and really have this thing look like it was worn and flying a hard life. That was going to present some challenges because when it comes to weathering aircraft, a lot of people don't really like it. And if you're one of those people, you're probably not going to like where this project goes in the next video. The Plastic Posse podcast two episodes ago had an aircraft roundtable, and one of the comments came up that it's very hard and to pull off a heavily weathered aircraft and have it look realistic. And I took that as a challenge, and there's really no better candidate than a Corsair. Many photos of them show them heavily weathered and very, very dirty and beat up. So to start that process, I was going to do some chipping. Remember, this aluminum paint has some AK chipping fluid on top of it, and it's had about an hour to dry. And now I'm going to come in with some very thin layers of Mr. Color Zinc Chromate Yellow. And lacquer paints are notoriously hard to chip. But the benefit of that is, when they do chip, they look very realistic. So I'm going to spend a few minutes here chipping this. It may seem like this is overboard right now, but you have to remember that as you continue in the build with more weathering steps, all this chipping is going to start to be pushed back on the canvas. So this was one of the first times that I was going to trust the process and really let things go to town. Once the chipping was done, I let the lacquer paints dry for a full two days just to make sure they were completely cured. Normally I can paint on top of them, but because this is going to be the base for another chipping layer, I didn't want to take too many chances. While that was all drying, I then moved on to the bottom of the aircraft to start doing some sandwich shading. The whole point of that is to give the paint some more depth. Now with the belly drying, I decided to pull off one of the insignias just to see how things had turned out. If I had have done this on top of all the chipping fluid, it would have gone very differently. So let's move into the weathering process. Because I'm still learning oils and I'm not 100% confident with them yet, I like to get as much contrast as possible in the paint using the airbrush layers by coming in with lighter tones and darker tones and even different colors just to try to make that color bounce around a little bit and look less boring. This gives the impression that the paint is worn, that it's faded, that it's stained, all kinds of little goodies. I won't lie though, when I started putting down that bright Tamiya blue, I was starting to think I may have made a mistake. 
But the nice thing is, once you start adding your blend layer, it pushes back that contrast a little bit. And it starts to tie things together. Normally, I wouldn't leave the paint looking this beat up, but I really wanted this paint to pop, so I left it as is, and then planned on the oils taking it even further. One problem that came up with the Glossy Blue is that it absolutely covers everything underneath. It does not care what it's on. So all the marbling, the sandwich shading, gone as soon as that blue's on top. So with the Test Tojo in hand, I had to come up with an idea that would still have the dark blue having the same wear and tear as the intermediate blue. To do that, I started with the Glossy Blue and then did some post shading using lighter colors. Instead of masking this camouflage as I normally would for nice, clean, feathered edges, I freehanded it because quite a few photos of the Corsair showed that this was actually a very rough transition and it looked like it had been painted by hand in the factory. With the demarcation line painted on the front of the aircraft and the rear completely painted, it was time to turn my attention back to the chipping on the leading edge of the wings, the engine cowling, and all the areas that would see some debris flying around while they're taxiing, taking off, or flying through an exploding Zero fighter. The biggest challenge with multi-layer chipping is being able to chip the paint on top without damaging the paint below. One thing I know some people will do is put a gloss coat down to seal in their chipping layers beforehand. But the only problem with that is a gloss coat is only as strong as the paint it's on top of. So if that paint is still sitting on top of chipping fluid, the gloss coat will tear away just as easily as the paint does. So instead of using a gloss coat, my kind of cheat, if you will, to get around that was to put an acrylic layer of paint on top of the lacquer for that final C blue. Remember earlier when I said that acrylic paints are easy to chip off of a lacquer paint? That's going to be used to my advantage now because even though the gloss sea blue in the end will be a lacquer paint, it's going to be sitting on top of an acrylic paint which will make it very easy to chip and leave the paints below intact. Just keep in mind that I'm doing this all in very thin layers. That's the key to this. Once that nice dark glossy blue is down, I'm going to break that up a little bit with that Tamiya Field Blue again using some Yushi stencils. And because this is going to be an earlier Corsair without the tape sealing the panels around the fuel tank, you can bet that there's going to be a lot more post shading that comes in here. But before I do any more work with the airbrush, I'm going to pull off the insignias and see how everything works together and then take a break from it and come back the next night or even two nights later just to see if there's anything I want to do a little bit different or if I still like where things are going. This will save me from having to come back and strip paint and start over again on something if I change my mind. And that'll also make a great natural spot to end this video. I'd like to take a moment to also thank my patrons who support this channel outside of YouTube. They have access to videos a week early with ad free or a day early ad free depending on the price point you come in at. You can also see more work in progress photos along with blog updates. You can also support this channel by clicking like, subscribe, and making sure you've hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos. I am the Model Guy and I hope you've enjoyed part two. Powerful. Again to the wood, it was just basically wood, it's raw wood, uh, some, some washes to kind of age it, and then I hairsprayed it, sprayed some paint over it, wore off away, put some tape and mass and did some stripes or whatever, same process. It's really fun. Uh, it's not that super hard. It's, it's easy to control. And one of the things about hairspray is the reason I lean on the aerosols. I think Fuck. I mentioned this